There is a Honda CRV with the license plate GAG Y40. Your lights are on, so you might want to turn those off. Uh, so good to have you all here tonight. It is so good to see this beautiful crowd. You know, we really took a hit during COVID and our crowds were suffering, but they are climbing back up. And it's so good to have you here. Are you excited about the gospel celebration? <laughs> I am. I am so excited. We were just adding stuff to the program just a few minutes ago. <laughs> and I thought, you know, this is just going to be a wonderful time tonight. We're not even sure what all is going to happen tonight. But we know this. We're going to have a wonderful time. We're going to worship the Lord. We're going to clap our hands and tap our toes. And we're going to go out of here having been lifted into God's presence and encouraged and inspired. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's what happens every year at the gospel celebration. And it has become one of the favorite concerts on our concert series. Now, speaking of the concert series, I want to mention that we have one final event after this. And it starts on Monday. So it's coming up very quickly. It is called Inspired Exhibit. Now, I'm going to take just a moment to explain to you what Inspired Exhibit is. Inspired Exhibit is awesome. <laughs> it is awesome. This is an exhibition of rare Bible manuscripts. Some of them are scrolls that are over a thousand years old. We have ancient biblical manuscripts. Um, from English Bibles and so on. It is awesome. It has been on display at the British Museum in London. It has been on display at the Vatican Museum in Rome. This is an awesome display. You say, how did Little Hope Sound Ministries get the privilege of having this kind of an exhibition on campus? That's a very good question. I'll tell you how. COVID. <laughs> COVID curtailed their international travel and they started looking for domestic outlets that they had not previously explored. And we raised our hands real high and said, pick me, pick me, pick me. And they are, they're here. In fact, they're over there setting up in the big tabernacle right now as we sit here, as we speak. And it is awesome. I want you to experience it. Now, there are two ways that you can experience this. And I hope you'll experience it in both ways. First of all, you need to go through the exhibit itself. That is where all the manuscripts are. It has some interactive learning opportunities. So for instance, they have a full-scale replica of a Gutenberg press. Did you know that the Gutenberg press was a key component of the spreading of the Word of God? The first book printed on the Gutenberg press was the Bible. And so you will see a replica. You can take home a page printed from this replica of the Gutenberg Press. And I think that's pretty amazing. There will also be opportunities for children and youth. So don't hesitate to bring your kids or by the looks of many of you, your grandkids. <laughs> that's terrible, isn't it? I'm starting to look. I'm getting gray up here. Some of you may be even your great grandkids. How many of you have great grandkids? Oh, my word, look at, bring your great-grandkids. <laughs> we would love to have them all, okay? So that's the first way that you can experience it. Call in advance. The number is on this brochure, and you can, it's just our switchboard number. They will transfer you to my assistant. Her name is Kara Gumbiner. She can sign you up for a time to come, especially if you're coming in a group. If you're just coming as an individual or a couple, you could just drop in. Uh, it opens at 11 a.m., Monday through Friday. It closes at 8 p.m., okay? Now, here's the second way that you can experience it. The second way is you can come to the lectures that we have. Now, you may say, lectures. Oh, I don't want a lecture. Well, not the kind of lectures that your wife gives you, okay? <laughs> These are lectures from people that know what they're talking about. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies. That could easily go the other way. In fact, it probably should go the other way if we're honest, right? <laughs> it's that mansplaining that you get tired of, right? Come on, ladies, go ahead, yes. <laughs> oh, dear. No, we have some experts coming in. Dr. Danny McCain, 
who has been a missionary to Nigeria for many years. He's also an incredibly accomplished academic and has in, done intensive study in the history of God's Word, the development of God's Word. He will be here. He's a graduate of Hope Sound Bible College, which is pretty amazing. And then we have uh, Dr. Scott Carroll. Now, Dr. Scott Carroll is the curator of this exhibit. How many of you have heard of Hobby Lobby? Okay, most of you have. The Green family owns Hobby Lobby. How many of you are aware that the Green family owns the finest collection of rare Bibles in private hands in the world? You know that? How many of you have ever been to the Bible Museum in Washington, D.C.? Awesome. Many more of you need to go because it is amazing, and it's the Green family's collection. Dr. Scott Carroll was the curator of the Green family collection for many years and helped them compile that. Now, he's no longer working with them. He's working on his own now with Inspired Exhibit. But this is an incredible man with deep knowledge and uh, wonderful, wonderful background in biblical archaeology. And so he will be lecturing. Dr. McCain will speak on Monday night right here at 7 o'clock. Dr. Carroll will speak Tuesday night right here at 7 o'clock. And then the piece de resistance is that we have the finest Christian apologist who is alive today coming to our campus. It has been a bucket list item for me for years to get Josh McDowell to our campus. And I'm so excited that we have Josh McDowell coming. He will be here Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Y'all come, all right? It will be amazing. It's a rare opportunity for you to hear the finest apologist that is alive today. All right? So, thanks to some wonderful sponsors, Evergreen Private Care and Benjamin Crawford, it is provided as a free will offering. Now, some of you may be Calvinists and you object to a free will offering. If that's the case, we have a predestined offering of $25 per person given by irresistible divine decree. No, I'm kidding. That's terrible. If you're a Pentecostal, just let the Lord lead you. Let the Spirit lead you. Okay. <laughs> That's awful. Got to stop this denominational discrimination. We're non-denominational here. How about that? Okay. <laughs> All right. So good to have you here. Let me just say another word about the sponsors. As I mentioned, Evergreen Private Care is our brand new sponsor this year and they provide home health care in your home for when either you, your spouse, your loved one has needs that you are not able to fulfill. They do it not just as a business. They do it very professionally, but they do it as a ministry. Karen Wheeler is the owner of this company. She was the founding sponsor of this concert series. It was a different company back then, but she's the one that helped get this off the ground. I think that's amazing. She runs her company according to Christian principles. She is a Christian. Her children attended our school. Her son is now our state representative, by the way, John Snyder, and we're so proud of him. And uh, so we would love for you to show your appreciation to Evergreen Private Care. Reach out to them, email them, text them, thank them for sponsoring this concert series. And of course, if you have home health care needs, they are the professionals that you should reach out to. Also, Treasure Coast Sea Winds Funeral Home and Crematorium in partnership with Forest Hills Memorial Park. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Make those arrangements in advance. We don't like to think about dying, but all of us have been forced to think about it in the last few years, especially with this crazy pandemic. And do your executor a favor, do your children a favor, make those arrangements in advance and do it with Treasure Coast Sea Winds and Forest Hill Memorial Park. They are the professionals. Very quickly, I'll say, there are two faces that we miss very deeply here tonight. One of them is Elsie Campbell. He was the chaplain for Treasure Coast Sea Winds. And I just kind of like to dedicate tonight's performance to he and to another person who was an icon here in Hope Sound. She was always right up here on the second row at the gospel celebration. And her name was Linda Deckard and we miss her dearly. She taught here for over 40 years and is beloved in our community. So we're dedicating tonight's performance to those two people. All right, I'm gonna ask President Stetler to come and pray as we begin the program tonight, and it's our hope and prayer that you'll be inspired and blessed. Well, it's good to see you. Let's, let's bow our heads in prayer together. Heavenly Father, how we thank you for your goodness and mercy. 
We live in such a world that is confused and now fighting and all of the rest that's going on. So wonderful to know we have an anchor that holds and that anchor is a God who is faithful. Tonight we're gonna to celebrate that with music. Thank you for giving us music. May this be an evening of inspiration that will lift our hearts Godward and will give you praise for we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. All right, I want you to stand up, please, and let's start off. The choir is going to come because they're actually going to sing the first number on the program. But why don't we just have you sing the first number on the program? Does that sound all right? Stand up, if you would, and let's sing, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Chapel Choir from Hope Sound Bible College, accompanied by Carla Case. Still. 
is wonderful. Caitlin Huff was the soloist. Give her a hand. <laughs> How many of you all like four-part male harmony? You like quartets? How many quartet fans do we have out there? Oh, we have quite a few. All right, we're going to sing a real fun song tonight that says, He Made a Change. I hope he has made a change in your life. you enjoy that <laughs> yes indeed all right we have a little surprise we have a couple of girls that are going to play an instrument that some of you may not be familiar with you may look at it and think it's a violin but it ain't you know the difference between a violin and a fiddle a violin has strings and a fiddle has strings All right, and they're going to show you what they can do here a little bit on the fiddle, and they're going to saw away on them strings. How about that? <laughs> okay, power in the blood.
But in the meantime, why don't you welcome the Hope Sound Bible College Chapel Choir back. Mr. Lucas Ryder is coming back, and they're going to sing a couple of songs for us. Let's worship with them as they sing.
This is Jesus, Savior, Redeemer, perfect offering on a cross. All our sins are placed upon him. Oh, the greatness of his love willingly. without him this is Jesus crucified this is Jesus Wasn't that powerful? <laughs> that was Darren McDonald that sang that, and that was awesome. We actually, guys, before you come down, I skipped something on the program, so you can just go back up for a minute, or you can just go on. You could just come on, come on down. Just come on down. Why not? We were supposed to have a sing-along in there, and I blew right past it because I was excited to hear the choir sing. So I'll just have these guys kind of help me lead you in singing. Why don't you stand up? We just heard the whole story of the gospel encapsulated in one powerful song, didn't we? Wasn't that awesome? My goodness, went from the birth of Christ right through the, the, the crucifixion and the resurrection and the second coming. Oh, even so, come Lord Jesus. Aren't you looking for the day when he comes? Hallelujah. Do you have a good testimony tonight of victory in Jesus? Amen. Are you victorious in Christ tonight? I hope you are. Let's sing that wonderful old gospel song, I Heard an Old, Old Story, How the Savior Came from Glory. You know that, don't you, old victory in Jesus?
to sing those songs twice because some of you go to churches that don't sing those songs anymore and you've forgotten how to sing them, haven't you? <laughs> oh, I'll put in a shameless plug. At Hope Sound Bible Church, we still sing those songs. Amen? <laughs> and isn't it great to see young people singing those songs? Go ahead. Yes. It is wonderful to see a whole new generation growing up singing these wonderful old songs. I love songs that testify, songs that talk about what Jesus has done for me, but not just what he did 2,000 years ago, but what he's doing in my life right now. Amen? Amen. I brought this big old quartet back out here. <laughs> um, it's funny because we do a lot of traveling. I play for them, and so we travel a lot together. And sometimes we do weekend meetings at churches and so on. And sometimes I fly them. You know, the, plane lo or the, the, the airline loses money on these guys because the, the plane fuel is so much more. <laughs> But actually, we fly on those cheap airlines, like Spirit, the wings of the Spirit, right? Allegiant. And those airlines that love to nickel and dime you for luggage. And so I tell these guys, you know, we're on a Bible college shoestring budget. So you got to get everything you own, everything you need for this trip, in a backpack that you can take with you. Well, you know what that means. That means they've got to wear their suits on the plane right? Because we don't want them putting their suits in the backpack because they'll come out looking terrible. And so I was walking through the airport with these guys not long ago, all five of us in suits. And here's little old me and the rest of them. We were standing in the security line and this guy came up to me. He was kind of a cool dude. He was probably in his 50s, but he had like a surfer haircut, and he had real expensive athletic clothing on. He looked like maybe he worked for ESPN or something. Anyhow, he came over to me, and he kind of bumped into me, and he said, Hey, dude, are you their coach? <laughs> I was like, Yeah, but not like you think. <laughs> I'm their vocal coach. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, they have a wonderful a cappella song. How many of you like a cappella four part harmony? Oh, I do too. I do too. My Jesus knows just what I need. My Jesus knows just what I need. Yes, he knows just what I need. He satisfies, he satisfies my every need supplies. Yes, he knows just what I want. I need. My Jesus knows when I am lonely. He knows each pain. He sees each tear. He understands each lonely heartache. He understands and always cares. My Jesus knows just what I need. I need. Oh, yes, he knows, knows just what I need. He satisfies, he satisfies my every need, need supplies. Yes, he knows, knows just what I want. I need. When other friends seem to forget me when skies are dark when hope seems lost by faith I feel his arms around me and hear him say you're not My Jesus knows just what I need. Oh, yes, he knows just what I need. He satisfies, he satisfies my every need supplies. Yes, he knows just what I need. My Jesus knows just what I need. Oh, yes, he knows just what I need. He satisfies my needs, supplies. Yes, he knows just what I want. I need. He satisfies, he 
satisfies, he supplies. Yes, he knows just what I need. <laughs> you all like that bass? Isn't he great? <laughs> he is great. I, we were traveling one time, and, and somebody came up to him in the aisle of the church and said, you know, you're really good, and you guys are really good. That pianist, you could just leave at home. <laughs> they literally said that. <laughs> oh, goodness. I was, Elkin, I got to tease you just a little bit. Elkin is from the Bahamas, okay? And so when he came and got in the quartet, I was so excited because it's rare to find a college male voice that can hit those low notes. A lot of times the voice will deepen after they're out of college, but he's got it already going on. He'll be J.D. Sumner before it's all over, you know. But anyhow, uh, <laughs> we, were, uh, we were working on a song, and he got a little nervous while he was singing it. And when he got nervous, he slipped into his dialect from the islands. And so instead of saying through, he said true. And I said, now, Elkin, that's a problem because... We have a song that we're going to sing later on that says, through the fire, through the flood, through the waters, through the blood, through the dry and barren places. And I said, if you're singing true to fire, true to flood, true to water, true to blood, nobody's going to know what you're saying. <laughs> but he got it all worked out, and he's doing a bang-up job, isn't he? <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> this is a newer song. We inject a few news. There, just a few a small quota of new songs are allowed in this program. This is a program about old songs, right? <laughs> but this is a new one, and it's powerful. It says, who walks on the water, who speaks to the sea, who stands in the fire beside me. He roars like a lion. He bled as a lamb. He carries my healing in his hands. Jesus, hallelujah. Messiah 
with me.
Paul said in Philippians, God hath given him a name which, is name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Oh, friends, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, but I want willing knees, willing tongues to confess his name right now. Amen? Praise the Lord. Aren't you thankful for the name of Jesus? Aren't you thankful for the power in that name? Oh, there have been moments in my life when I couldn't pray, I couldn't put words together, I couldn't put thoughts together, but the one thing that I could do was whisper his name. <laughs> and when I did, his presence drew near. Oh, there is something about that name. If you don't know him tonight, you should. You should, because you are missing the very meaning of life, the very essence of life. It's knowing Jesus Christ in an intimate and personal relationship. Friends, that's what living is all about. Hallelujah. And that's what eternity is all about. I'm just about ready to give an altar call right now. <laughs> Actually, we're supposed to take an offering, and that doesn't seem very spiritual, does it? <laughs> well, you know, whether or not you think it is, it is, because we couldn't be having this concert tonight if we didn't take offerings. We talked about those sponsors earlier, but the number one sponsor of the concert series is who? Rhymes with who? It's you. <laughs> well, for me, it rhymes with, with who. For you, it doesn't, because you're not supposed to point at your neighbor and say you. You're supposed to say me. <laughs> so we would appreciate it so much if you would give generously in the offering tonight. It actually goes right back into helping these students. These students... These, this choir is getting ready to leave next month for a two-week tour. They're going to be going all over the place, up into the barren wastelands of the north that are now under the frigid domain of the White Witch of Narnia, right? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, they are heading. We are heading up that way soon. Hopefully, all the cold weather will be gone. And then this quartet and the trios that you're about to hear from after the offering is over, they also will be traveling all summer 10 weeks in a 15-passenger van. It's close fellowship, folks. We go to youth camps and, oh my goodness, stay in those nasty dormitories with all those adolescents whose mamas didn't do a good enough job teaching them hygiene and what to do with their laundry and all of that kind of stuff. <laughs> so help them out, will you? <laughs> Open up your wallets and your generosity and contribute if you would tonight in the offering. I'm going to ask the ushers to come at this time, and those violin ladies are going to come back. Would you like that? Would you like to hear from them again? All right. They're going to come back and play another piece. Now, before we pray for the offering, let me just say I cut a deal with my friends at New Hope Fellowship. Do we have anybody here from New Hope Fellowship tonight? Nobody's here from New Hope Fellowship. Okay, that's all right, because... They are having a concert tomorrow night with David Phelps. And they said, we want you to mention our concert. And I said, I'll mention your concert if you'll mention our inspired exhibit, which happens next week. So, y'all go see David Phelps and then come back on Monday for inspired exhibit. How about that? All right? <laughs> and one more thing before I get a text message from our bookstore manager. She's a sweet lady, but she very gently reminds me. I forgot to mention it at the beginning of the program. Before you leave tonight, don't get caught in that traffic jam pulling out of here. Just meander your way over to the post office right across the parking lot, and you can pick up the post office. Where'd that come from? <laughs> Oh my, that's terrible. I need to retire. <laughs> Meander your way across the parking lot to the bookstore, and they have wonderful books and CDs and DVDs and all sorts of things, and we'd love for you to pick up what you can over there. They even have some little snack items and all that sort of thing. So we're going to pray for the offering, and then these ladies, we're going to turn them loose on you. How about that? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your presence here tonight. Thank you for this beautiful music, these wonderful old songs that have such powerful meaning. Lord, we just pray that you continue to bless this evening with your presence. And may everyone go from this place inspired, uplifted, encouraged, convicted, whatever they need, Lord. May they have it as they leave. In the meantime, Lord, we pray that you'd help them to be generous and support. Bless them for their support, we pray. In Jesus' precious name. Amen.
wasn't that great? <laughs> I love that. There were some strings in there as well as strangs, weren't they? They've done a lot of practicing. Let me just acknowledge them. The one on my left, your right, was Deanna Miller, and she is from Pennsylvania, and she is a senior. She's graduating, and we are super sad about that. We, we wish she had about four more years here, but she's graduating, and she has made a few recordings on CD, and they are fabulous. You should take them home with you. They have them over in the post office. <laughs> no, over in the bookstore. So stop over and pick up some of her recordings. And then next to her was Darla Hausman. She's brand new to us this year, so hopefully we'll get to enjoy her music for a good while yet. But uh, they did a great job, didn't they? Give them one more big round of applause. <laughs> And while we're applauding people, let me just go ahead and mention these wonderful musicians that have joined me on the platform here tonight. Over in the cage over there is John Adams. John Adams is a wonderful, wonderful drummer. Give him a big round of applause. Yes. John Adams is from Port St. Lucie, and the thing I love about him is, well, you know what they call people who hang out with musicians, right? Percussion players. No, that's awful. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> no, John is an excellent musician. He doesn't just beat the tar out of the drum set. He plays very tastefully. He plays beautifully. He compliments the song. Doesn't he do a wonderful job? Give him one more round of applause. Yes, he does. And then back here behind me, that good-looking young man back there is Clayton Carroll on the bass. Isn't he great? This is the first time he's played with us, and I'm so happy that he's here. He's doing a wonderful job, and we appreciate that so much. And then I mentioned those trios that are going to be traveling. I'm going to ask one of them to come out right now, and they are going to sing for you. Their name is Harmony. Now, actually, names can be deceiving. They fight like cats and dogs, but no, that's not true. <laughs> but they're going to sing for you tonight a wonderful song by Greater Vision, God wants to hear you sing, and I'm going to get out of their way, and I'm going to go over and play the old vintage Hammond while their pianist takes over. How about that? Okay. Can be. That's when God. 
that song? <laughs> How many of you have been through the fire lately? Yes, I see those hands. 
Thank God he is there and we can trust him. The flames shall not hurt thee, I only design thy dross to consume and thy gold to refine. Hallelujah. Don't you love those old hymns? How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord. Oh dear, I dare not get started because <laughs> we'll be here all night. We're, we're coming in on the home stretch here. I want to ask another trio to come out, and their name is Redeemed, and they are brand new. They just started this year, and they are doing a wonderful job. Yes, go ahead and give them a little encouragement there. <laughs> and they're going to sing a wonderful old song, old gospel song, Hold On a Little Longer. Help is on the way. Now, some of you, this is a fun, upbeat song, but I just want to tell you tonight, some of you may have dragged in with you some unpleasant things. I'm not talking about your spouse, but no, that's terrible. Some of you may have brought in with you some very heavy burdens, some pain, some hurt, maybe even some doubts, some fears, some frustrations. I just want to tell you, hold on. <laughs> hold on to the promises of God's Word. Hold on. Help is on the way. If you'll believe, if you'll trust, at some point you're going to feel those wonderful everlasting arms of God underneath. Hallelujah. As you claim his promises, as you speak his name, he will come and he will rescue you. I love this old gospel song. A holy presence near and your witness of the stronghold of your enemy fall down hold on a little longer soon you'll hear sweet victory sound hold on a little longer help is on the way hold on a little longer you'll find strength today Don't you love that song? Didn't they do a great job? That's redeemed. Okay, stand up, would you? 
Let's do one more sing-along. We got to do one more sing-along before we go, okay? I want us to sing When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. Clayton, what key did I say that was going to be in? G. Okay. If I had my phone over here, I'd know, but I left it over there on the Hammond. So anyhow, here we go. When, how many of you all know when the roll is called up yonder? Do you know that? Oh, you do. Let's do it. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. to see him look upon his face. Let's do it. Oh, I'm not playing on this one. journey through this 
let me lift my voice. Cares all past, all that lasts ever to rejoice. When in service for my Lord, dark may be the night, but I'll cling more close to him and he will give me light. Satan's snares may vex my soul and turn my thoughts aside. But my Lord goes ahead, leads whate'er be tied. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, all that past, ever to rejoice. Heaven is a wonderful place. time together this evening. We're just about to wrap it up. <laughs> I love the song that the guys are going to sing. It says, now don't you weep for me when I'm gone, because I won't have to leave here alone. And when I hear that last trumpet sound, my feet won't stay on the ground. I'm going to rise with a shout. I'm going to fly. I'm going to rise with my Lord to the sky. Heaven is near. And I can't stay here. Goodbye, world, goodbye. Yes, truthfully, we're going to live in this world, but it'll be this world as God originally designed it. We're going to leave behind the tragedy and the heartache and the suffering of this present world infected, corrupted by sin. And God is going to bring heaven and earth together. He's going to create a new heaven and a new earth, the scripture says. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> I want to be with Jesus, don't you? I'm excited about that day. I've told all my troubles goodbye, goodbye to reach here and decide. This world where I roam cannot be my home, I'm bound for that home in the sky. I walk and I talk with my Lord, I feast every day on His Word. Heaven is near and I can stay here. Goodbye, world, goodbye. Now don't you weep for me when I'm gone. Cause I won't have to leave here alone. And when I hear that last trumpet sound, my feet won't stay on the ground. I'm gonna rise with a shout, gonna fly. I'm gonna rise with my Lord in the sky. Trumpet sound, my 
evening. We're going to sing you out of the auditorium and right over to the post office, okay? Right over to the bookstore. We're going to sing, I saw the light, but you can feel free. Go ahead and bring the lights up and you all can be dismissed. God bless you. Come see Inspired Exhibit on Monday. Come hear Josh McDowell on Wednesday.